As Joe Biden was sworn in as president on January 20th, about half of the United States and most of the world breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, the orange buffoon has exited stage left. It can only get better from here, right? Right? Yeah, well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this train wreck is just getting started. The Biden-Harris presidency is a disaster in the making. It will leave moderates disillusioned while fueling insurrection on the far left and right. The chaos we saw at the Capitol on January 6th, that was nothing. As a country, you guys are sleepwalking into very dangerous territory. Let's start with the elephant in the room. A large percentage of conservatives, up to 83% of Republicans according to one poll, don't believe that Biden won the 2020 election. Now you might say that these people are delusional. You might say that they're crazy. But nothing you say is going to change the fact that they feel cheated. And nothing you do will increase the legitimacy of the Biden administration in their eyes. It's worth noting that a large percentage of the police and military count themselves among conservatives. So the implications here are quite serious. The outrage from the left on this issue rings hollow. After all, they just spent the last four years refusing to accept the outcome of the 2016 election while peddling half-baked conspiracy theories about Russian interference. Evidence? Who needs evidence? In this regard, both sides have some growing up to do. Big Tech's current strategy of silencing and deplatforming anybody who talks about this stuff or expresses any opinion they don't like is going to backfire. These policies are feeding the perception that peaceful avenues of political change have been closed, and they're pushing moderates into the arms of extremists. You take away someone's voice, you make them feel powerless. Where do you suppose that leads? What many don't seem to realize is that during the Trump administration, militia and survivalist movements were largely pacified. Their man was in power, and he was going to make America great again. So most of them stopped talking about overthrowing the government or preparing for the collapse, instead focusing their attention on the antics of Antifa and BLM. As of January 20th, this demographic has begun to absorb some bitter realities. Not only has their hero been kicked to the curb, but Democrats now control the House and the Senate. This means new laws. And some of these laws are not going to go over very well. For example, gun control. What are the chances that Biden resists the urge to kick that hornet's nest? And let's not pretend that the right is the only chaotic variable in this equation. The Democrats might not believe that Antifa exists, but that certainly didn't stop them from smashing the DNC's windows on Inauguration Day. These people don't want Biden. They want revenge. And they're not going to go away. Nor is it likely that the BLM movement is going to stand down for this administration, especially after being overtly snubbed once the election was over. The fact that Biden and Harris both have a long history of supporting policies that put thousands of African Americans behind bars certainly doesn't help matters. The potential for an insurgency on all sides hasn't been lost on the establishment. That's why they're signaling that the full force of the national security apparatus will now be pointed inward to deal with, quote, domestic terrorist. So I know looking forward that the members of the, the Biden team who have been nominated or have been appointed are now moving in laser-like fashion to try to uncover as much as they can about what looks very similar to insurgency movements that we've seen overseas, mm -hmm. where they germinate in different parts of a country and they gain strength and it brings together an unholy alliance frequently of religious, ex religious extremists, authoritarians, fascists, bigots, uh, racists, nativists, uh, even libertarians. Surprised? Don't be. In Biden's own words, he practically wrote the Patriot Act. Right after 1994, and you can ask the Attorney General this, because I got a call when he introduced the Patriot Act. He said, Joe, I'm introducing the act basically as you wrote it in 1994. It was defeated then, not by any liberals. It was defeated then by the folks who worried that we'd have the Minutemen would get in trouble, by the Mr. Bars of the world, who were worried about the right wing, not anything else. So just, that has nothing to do with you all, but just to set the record straight, almost the same thing that got passed, the Patriot Act, was introduced by me in 1994, and it was the right wing that defeated it. You guys tried to help get it passed. So, clearly a train wreck on the domestic front. But what about foreign policy? Let's take a look at Biden's cabinet picks. Over one third of Biden's Pentagon transition team lists their most recent employment as organizations, corporations, or think tanks that directly receive money from the weapons industry. Biden's pick for Secretary of Defense, retired four-star Army General Lloyd Austin, sits on the board of Raytheon. Austin is also known for leading the 3rd Infantry Division, which spearheaded the invasion into Iraq. But hey, 
none of that matters. The appointment is historic because skin color. And then there's Kathleen Hicks, the first woman to be chosen as Deputy Defense Secretary. Wow. Truly inspirational. Never mind the fact that Hicks is the Henry Kissinger Chair at the Center for Strategic International Studies, a warmongering think tank, or that her podcast is sponsored by Weapons Corporation's BAE, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. Just listen to the intro. Hi, I'm Kathleen Hicks, Senior Vice President and Director of the International Security Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. And this is Defense 2020, a CSIS podcast examining critical defense issues in the United States' 2020 election cycle. We bring in defense experts from across the political spectrum to survey the debates over the U.S. military strategy, missions, and funding. This podcast is made possible by contributions from BAE Systems, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and the Talis Group. Biden's nominee for Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, supported the wars in Iraq and Libya and is currently advocating for regime change in Venezuela. That, the situ- that our stance towards Venezuela should change in essence, that we should no longer recognize Juan Guaido and, and, and enter into negotiations with, with Maduro? No, it is not. Uh, I very much agree with you, uh, Senator, first of all, uh, with regard to a number of the steps that were taken uh, toward Venezuela uh, in, uh, in recent years, uh, including recognizing uh, Mr. Guaido, uh, recognizing the National Assembly as the only democratically uh, elected institution uh, in Venezuela, um, seeking to increase pressure on the regime uh, led by a brutal dictator uh, in Maduro, uh, as well as to um, uh, try to work uh, with some of our allies and partners. I, the, the hard part is that uh, for all of uh, those efforts, which, uh, which I support, um, we obviously have not gotten the results uh, that, uh, that we need. And one of the things I would really welcome doing, uh, if confirmed, is, is to come and talk some of that, uh, that through with you uh, and with others on this committee because um, we need uh, an effective policy that can restore uh, Venezuela uh, to, uh, to democracy, starting with free and fair elections, and how uh, can we best uh, advance that ball. Biden is also bringing back Victoria Nuland as U.S. Undersecretary of State. In case you've forgotten, Nuland is the one who worked with neo-Nazi extremists in Ukraine to topple Yanukovych back in 2014. And of course we have Biden's pick for the head of the Office of Management and Budget, Nira Tandon, who's gone on record calling for Libya to pay for the privilege of being bombed. Quote, We have a giant deficit. They have a lot of oil. Most Americans would choose not to engage the world because of that deficit. If we want to continue to engage the world, gestures like having oil-rich countries partially pay us back don't seem crazy to me. As Caitlin Johnson so eloquently put it, Biden will have the most diverse, intersectional cabinet of mass murderers ever assembled. Nice. But at least Biden will turn things around for the environment, right? Well, not really. On his Environmental Protection Agency transition team, Biden installed Michael Bacabe, a former DuPont chemical executive who worked to fight regulations in the chemical industry. Bacabe led DuPont's defense against the regulation of a chemical called C8, which has been linked to cancer, liver damage, and infertility. Biden's pick for Agricultural Secretary, Tom Vilsack, aka Mr. Monsanto, is an ardent advocate for the biotech industry. During Vilsack's previous tenure at the Agricultural Department, he sped up approval for GMO crops and made policy changes to allow poultry slaughter facilities to essentially police themselves. Now, there's no way to sugarcoat this picture. Biden's victory doesn't represent the end of an era of chaos, but merely a new chapter. Those who want to avert the worst-case scenario need to be working to unify a coalition of the sane, a strain of opposition that doesn't fall for the left-right paradigm trap, a contingent that's not so naive to believe that they can vote their way out of this mess. To accomplish this, we need to establish networks of communication that tech companies can't censor or shut down. It's time to migrate from Facebook and Twitter to Telegram, and from YouTube to Odyssey. Join us there now, and encourage your friends and family to make the move as well. Don't let Silicon Valley silence you. If you want to understand why all of this is happening, visit stormcloudsgathering.com. The disintegration of the post-World War II order is accelerating, and the powers that be have badly miscalculated. Those who see what's coming would be well advised to move away from big cities. Time to start growing your own food, detach from the grid, and reduce dependence on fossil fuels. A great reset is in the works, but what comes next is up to you. All of our content is Creative Commons. 
You have permission to download, copy, and distribute by any and all means. If you'd like to support our work, please visit our donate page at stormcloudsgathering.com forward slash donate.